and welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel where we've got a lot to talk about today. These markets are flying. And the first thing is first, I do want to put in a little live trade here. So here we go on KuCoin. This is how you do it. If you want to crank up the leverage a little bit, uh, you can scroll to the right here and hit 5x leverage. Pick your buy price and settle in for, I don't know, 50% of your assets. How about we do 100% of our leftover assets and take a little scalp here. And to confirm that trade, oh, we got to adjust the risk limit. So the max I have is 500K, confirm. And let's get, I'm going to go 4X. Oh, there we go. Boom. Orders are filling. Orders are filling. And why do I like this setup for Mr. Matic this morning? This has been one of the stronger performers over the past few weeks. Yet we are just reapproaching this kind of breakdown level. Um, on the hourly time frame, we got declining volatility as um, we're getting back into the bullish control zone here. You know, we got kicked out once. We're coming back and we are about to take out this high at a minimum revisit the high here for a quick scalp of 3% or 1.5%. It was 3% when I started looking at this trade. We're going to bounce off the yellow 21 as we are getting the golden, the golden cross on the hourly time frame. So that leads me in to why I want to take this position right now, despite other coins which have been absolutely blasting off to the moon, like Luna, which is another one um, I like. Why is that? Well, uh, Luna... Luna, billion dollar, one billion dollar coin sale. Mr. Terra Luna, couldn't tell you exactly what it does, but the charts don't lie. And I know from some friends that this is a strong project. But Luna, the Luna Foundation, uh, guard a nonprofit organization linked to Terra, claims it has raised $1 billion in private token sales. It says the money will be used for UST Forex Reserves donation in Bitcoin. Uh, UST is a stable coin that uses Terra, Luna's, Terra Luna to maintain its peg. There's been a lot of money flowing into crypto recently with $100 million plus funding rounds becoming relatively commonplace. But a recent over-the-counter token sale has taken it to another level. Um, I'm just trying to see who $1 billion token sale of Luna led by Three Arrows Capital. Headed by sometimes Ethereum critic Suzu and Jump Crypto and the same trading group that made Solana cross-chain bridge with wormhole after a 320 million dollar hack the foundation did not respond to decrypt's questions about the specifics of the raise including whether the funds were raised directly in bitcoin given the market downturn the value of the raise could be less than a billion depending upon what it raised however that was a few days or weeks ago this happened a couple of weeks ago in fact when did this happen i'll show you exactly when it happened Right here on February 23rd, we had this nice kind of break of the range here. Um, and then actually uh, was a great day to short the market. That was the day the Russian, the evening, the Russian Ukraine war happened. Bitcoin got slacked. And then um, the very next day, it bounced back up alongside NASDAQ, which took a huge leg up. And NASDAQ futures have been lying to us the past couple of days. Another reason why I'm jumping long on some positions right now. 
Futures have been lying. They start off negative early in the morning. Then the market opens up. And guess what happens? Guess what happens? The market opens up and everybody starts to party on this news. And I'll tell you what the news is. This is the narrative. This is what's going on. This is what has saved the day for Bitcoin. And not only Bitcoin, but the NASDAQ. And, you know, Bitcoin pretty much does whatever the NASDAQ does in layman's terms. Um, let me pull it up here. And here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. So everybody's been asking, Chris, why have you flipped from bearish to bullish as soon as the war broke out. And uh, basically, here's what we were looking at. Before the war broke out, we were looking at this scenario. No war, a half a point increase in rates, and the Fed reducing its balance sheet alongside wage price spiraling, which would have been horrible for stocks and Bitcoin. And what is wage price spiraling? Okay, that is when wages are rising faster than inflation. So inflation was at seven and a half percent, and I think uh, wage inflation was around eight, eight and a half percent. And that's what we had in January and early February, which was the perfect storm for a recession. And in fact, that's why, you know, coupled with the news from the Fed, they were going to raise rates, and NASDAQ went down 20 percent, as you can see right here. Uh, NASDAQ took quite a stumble. And if you'd been following along our channel, we did call this out with a break of this falling channel and a measure move all the way down here. Um, but just to give you an idea, from the high to the low, 22%. Okay, and now we've rallied a bit off the lows. And I do like how uh, this uh, is confirmed bullish divergence on the daily. So what is hidden bullish divergence? Excuse me. Hidden bullish divergence is when price makes lower highs and RSI makes higher highs. So, excuse me, that is not hidden, bear, that's, excuse me, that's bearish divergence. In an uptrend, price makes higher lows, RSI makes lower lows. So, what we have here, this is the last low I'm looking at, and here's two higher lows than this low. Alongside, what do we have here? Oh, that's three drives. That's This is the perfect bullish, hidden bullish divergence that you'd want to see. So you've got one, two, three drives coming back to this low. So you can see these are significantly lower lows in RSI, the relative strength index. And then you can see here, coming back from this point, You've got one, two, three higher lows. So this is going to give us a shot at a minimum to the top side of the range, I'd say at 15,103. This isn't financial advice. This is technical analysis, okay? And if you want to learn more about this, uh, we you can set up a free TradingView account uh, just like I have it set up here um, in the link in the description below. All right, so NASDAQ, got totally dumped on with the inflation news and um, um, kind of the initial, you know, day of war, right? Um, before it happened, right? But then the market likes certainty. They know, okay, now we're in war. And here's what, here's what's going on, right? So before the scenario we were looking at was no war, a half a point interest rate hike in March, and the Fed reducing its balance sheet, essentially sucking the liquidity out of the market alongside wage price spiraling was a perfect storm for stocks going down and Bitcoin going down. In fact, uh, that's what we'd been telling our clients. So what's important to know now is the scenario has now changed, at least based on comments from Barkin, Daly, and Bullard and the Fed chair members, which said, yeah, there's going to be a risk of higher inflation, you know, more upside to inflation. But the Russia-Ukraine war brings up 
unexpected uncertainties, right? The European Central Bank is now talking about potentially delaying stimulus cuts. I wouldn't be surprised if Powell says the same thing. And so we have, you know, we, we could still have food and energy inflation, right? But now there is an excuse. It's not just Russian companies raising prices. It's companies raising prices because of the Ukraine-Russia war. So again, it's not just companies raising prices because, you know, they printed 40% of all the money in the history of the world in the last 12 months. It's companies raising prices because the Ukraine-Russia war. So now the Fed has another excuse to say, oh, this is just transitory, right? We're just in transitory inflation. And... Um, you know, we just got to wait for the Russia-Ukraine crisis to diffuse. Let's wait. So the Fed is expected to become more dovish as the international community is concerned with the Russia-Ukraine crisis. And this is why the Fed's funds, futures markets, are only pricing in a quarter percent rate increase on March 16th. And they're pricing this in with 90% certainty. So yeah, there is 10% certainty of a half point, right? 10% for a half point. But um, I don't know. Would you take the 90% and Jerome Powell's, you know, continued ability to kick the can down the road? I'm going to go with that. Now, that doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet, right? We've got some very, very critical dates coming up here. Again, those dates are, what are they? What are they? Come on, come on, dates pop up for me. I had them written down here somewhere. Anyways, it's going to be the labor report, which is around March 4th. And then I believe the inflation report around March 10th. Don't quote me on that, um, but I will, I will, let's see, let's see, here it is, I found it, um, okay, March 4th, the labor report, and March 10th, the inflation report, I was right, so what could happen is depending upon where they pull the data from, the war hit, I think, on the 24th of last month, or this month. No, sorry. Last month. It's February. It's, it's March 1st. Welcome to March, guys. 2022. And that does remind me today, at the end of today, we're going to be drawing for an Oculus headset. I know it sounds silly. Why would you want to go in the VR world? Well, I did uh, a skydiving tour where it lets you skydive over like Greenland and um, over the Netherlands. And that was pretty cool. Uh, it does feel like you're jumping out of a plane. And um, yeah, and, and then this morning, I watched an interview of Mark Zuckerberg and Lex Friedman, a two hour interview just going over the metaverse and, um, and, and, you know, virtual reality. And really, I hate to say it, guys, it's, it's coming. It's coming. So if, you know, the sooner you can get prepared, right, it's kind of like email, right? A lot of people said, oh, why would I ever use email when I could just, you know, pick up the phone and, and call my uh, uncle, or, or and, and tell them, you know, about my vacation in Hawaii. An email takes 45 minutes to send a photograph. Look, just accept it. It's coming. And the sooner you can be educated on it, the better. I mean, that's what I would assume. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe you don't want to get educated. But um, I, whoever wins the headset today, um, you know, just like, and all you got to do is be a subscriber. All you got to do is hit the button, hit subscribe. There's like 150 people and you're going to get entered in the drawing today. And, um, Hey, chances are you might, you might just get picked. So 
back on to what you guys came for, and that is Mr. Bitcoin. And let's just check in. Oh, look at this trade already going down, right? And that's sometimes what you got to do is you got to just go for the gold. So down 4000 bucks already. Liquidation. Oh, excuse me. Matic is up 2500 bucks. This guy is down 4000 bucks. So not bad. So in about five minutes, we're up 2.5%. Um, and that's even with the price pulling back here slightly, which... Um, what is this show? Yep, up 4,000 bucks. I'll take it. Anyways, I'm just going to move it on up here and um, move it on up. I'll have to adjust this in the next 15 minutes. Look at Gala getting hammered on. Gala is another one I have a little position on here, which I think uh, this one is going to do okay. If not, I've got some risk management in place and uh, I'm not worried about it. But this is a gaming coin that I do think with the advent of yesterday's closure above there, right? We have some drives of um, let's see here. Would that be Again, yep, that would be it right here. So going back from here, you've got one, two, three drives of bullish divergence coming from this point right here. So RSI is making higher lows. There it is. It's coming from this point. Forgive me. So RSI is making higher lows while price is making lower lows. Boom. So that in my book is going to give us a shot up to 35 cents at a minimum. Um, some would say it would only give you a shot up to the green 55, which are already played out. But what I like about this coin is when Bitcoin goes up and Bitcoin is, is looking mighty strong here. Look at this girthy green candle. Uh, this thing looks like it at least wants to revisit the highs. Again, what we're looking for on Bitcoin was either a daily closure above 46,000 or below 32,000, excuse me, 33,000. And that's going to give us our next major move on Bitcoin. And I would say that any kind of a daily closure above 46 is going to give us that run to 52,000 and a minimum. And what else is causing Bitcoin to just fly to the moon right now? Um, well, here's, here's the last point I want to bring up and I'll just try and use a different chart, maybe less lines, but this is on a weekly time frame. And what do we have here? So if you take a retracement from this high to this spike low, right? That is how you would do a Fibonacci retracement. I'll just show you again. Somebody was asking me, what is this thing? How does it work? Well, you click on this tool. It might be here or it might be there on your, on your chart. And you go from the high to the low. And what happens is bull traps happen between the 0.5 and the 618, which is going to be coming in between 52 and 55,000. And I would imagine if Bitcoin does something like this, and what is that? It goes up to 55,000 and then it comes back down and breaks below this guy right here at 46,000. That would be a confirmed bull trap. And I would expect much lower prices over time, a swing back down at least to 30,000 with some bounces over time and then a full on bear market to ensue. So that's the big thing to be aware of, you know, it's really easy to be bullish, right? Everybody makes money in a bull market. And that's exactly what this has been, right? Over the last two years, the great old saying, don't confuse brains with a bull market, right? And what is that? When Bitcoin goes from $4,000 in March of 2022, and it goes to $60,000 in less than a year, right? And then it has a little 50% retracement, which is just a hiccup in Bitcoin land and goes back to 69,000, right? 
Well, that's called a bull market that never goes down. And you don't have to have any brains to make money in a bull market. But in a bear market, which is like what we saw back here, let's let's pull up another chart. When Bitcoin goes from 2017 to 2018, or call it 2019, right? So over two years, Bitcoin goes from $20,000 to $4,000 and it has several bounces, right? What are you going to do in that market? Are you going to get scared and sell at $10,000? Are you going to get scared and sell at $4,000? Who knows, right? Because if you don't know what you're doing, very, very likely it's going to end in tears like a lot of retailers. So that is often why people use us at Bitcoin Advisors. We're like a Bitcoin coach. We're here to coach you when's a good time to buy. More importantly, if it might be a time to sell based on your strategy. So we're going to help you come up with a strategy that fits your needs, right? You might be somebody who has time to look at charts every day. You might have somebody that has time to look at charts once a month or once every six months, or you might not even want to look at the charts at all. You might just want to buy and hold and don't care if it goes up or down for five or 10 years, but we're going to walk you through the steps of what that looks like. And that's why I highly, highly recommend you click on the link in the description below. You can get our free investor guide today. Uh, just click on the link in the description below and don't forget to set up your trading view account. Um, so what are we looking for at Bitcoin advisors? We're looking for Bitcoin to do something like this. Boom. And likely come back down and that you know, we'll have to judge it when we get to this point. All I can say is that based on the daily right now, if we kind of get any daily closure above 46,000, very likely going to head up towards 52. If we get a daily closure below 33, very likely going to go down to about 30,000 bucks. Now, what else do we like to look at is called underlying market dynamics. And let's check out the fear and greed index. And that includes open interest, funding rates, the leverage ratio, and the fear and greed index, which have been very painfully dry to watch, right? It has been like watching paint dry on the wall. And what's going on? We've got open interest ticking up here over the last day to 10.9, almost 11 billion alongside price action coming up. That is very nice. Um, what else do we have? Funding rates. What are the funding rates doing? That is the cost to have these leverage positions, which I was just showing you. So funding rates are negative. And essentially that means uh, it is costing you to hold your long positions uh, more. Now these funding rates are inconsequential at the moment, but when they get down there, uh, let's, let's look at some past prior history. When funding rates get down to, looks like not 0.4, what typically happens, well, let's see what price did back on May 21. May 21, May 21, what was Bitcoin doing? May of 21. Oh, what do you know? Bitcoin got totally schlack. So you're paying to hold your lungs. It's getting really expensive to hold those long positions. So what ends up happening? People let them go. And what happens to the market? Well, this is just one of the underlying market dynamics that helped us identify this massive down leg. Okay. Um, what else here do we want to look at on the daily? Another thing we are very proud to follow is the daily trend, which has uh, been in a downtrend except for we made our first higher high here and here's a confirmed higher low. Now all we need, no, that, that's a trend reversal right there, higher high and higher low. And that is why we were saying, hey, you know, Bitcoin could hold on to 35,000 at this level, create another higher low. And uh, perhaps, perhaps this could be the reversal we were looking for on a macro level. Now, what I would like to do is see the open interest really get up there and head up towards 13, 14 billion. And once that happens, that's when we know, hey, 
there's a good chance of a 25% correction on 25% or more correction on Bitcoin, courtesy to Mr. Crown, who has given us that analysis, which has been fairly accurate if you go back and back test it. Now, um, what else do I got going on here? I'm going to, I, I got to close this thing. I don't, but uh, that's at 161. 162, okay, 1.62, 100%, I don't know what just happened on this, this trade, I wanted to go long, I don't know if I hit the right button, Sometimes that happens on stream and that's why you don't do trades on stream, but let's try it again. It doesn't hurt. It does not hurt to try it again because I do believe this thing is about to rally like a Phoenix in the sun. It's about to take off. We're about to explode to the upside. I think Matic has a good chance or is there another coin I want to pick as Bitcoin is Holding strong here on the four hour. Let's see what Bitcoin's doing on the four. Yeah, we're breaking out here. This is this is breakout territory. Luna's on a mission to Mars. Adam's doing great. Revisiting the highs. I would like to see Adam close above this level at 33 bucks. And I give a next shot at 37. Um, volatility is just ticking up. Stokes are getting up there. We are back in the bullish control zone. I do like that for some nice Adam Cosmos movement. Look at this guy. Also, one uh, one looks like it wants to run too. I'd say one is going to get a move up to at least this guy right here before short-term pullback. Maybe we should go with one instead of, yeah, I think we're going to go with one. One looks bullish. What's the hourly doing? Hourly's just ticking up in the critical zone, back in the bullish control zone. All right, Mr. One, now let's not screw this trade up here, okay? One has been a very nice performer as well. Um, that's Harmony One. Gala, you better giddy up here. But I'm gonna throw down and let's go. Let's go. Oh, so how do we do that? Well, first we gotta go over here to one and up 15%. Uh, might not be the best time to buy, but guess what guys? Indicators are on. Bitcoin is bullish. Stocks are gonna rally back up today. I'm willing to bet it. And I'm gonna throw down right now a small position, small trade, right? So what are we doing here? We're gonna buy long 100%. It's not even gonna let me order that many coins at once, watch. So I'm gonna pick higher up in the order book at 165.97, uh, 98. Yeah, and I'm gonna go. Buying long, adjust the risk limit. We're at a half a million bucks. So let's go with 3.2 million. 3.2 million, no, that's, that's still too much, 3 million. Boom. Let's get it. Come on. I don't know what was up with that Matic trade. I, I'm really, you know, that, that one threw me for a bit of a loop here. But on the hourly, just getting royally just exploding here. So where's kind of the next zone to watch out for? Let's pull up our chart here. And so I'm gonna put on a volume profile here. And the volume profile does show the point of control down here and virtually uh, there's nothing stopping this guy until 19 cents. See the volume is very low. We just got above this guy and this guy here. And that's on an hourly. Let's check out the four hour. And yeah, as I was saying, 19 cents that's 17 why do i like this one well let's go like this that's 8.93 percent higher so we will follow up on this trade tomorrow i hope you guys have had some fun today 
I hope you enjoyed the video later today. And I hope most of all, you all have a blessed, wonderful day. Take care. I'm going to sign out and leave you all with this wonderful analysis. Take care. Bye. Thank you.